Hello. We are the Fodges. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Get this set up real quick. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm Matt, and this is my beautiful wife, Kaylee. Mm -hmm. We have been married for just about eight years. Mm -hmm. um, we have no kids. We have two dogs. We're dog lovers. And we have been involved in Reengage for the last two two plus years. Um, couldn't speak more highly of this ministry. Just happy to be involved. So, I grew up in a Christian home. We went to church pretty much every time it was open. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior when I was seven years old. My mom and dad were both heavily involved in the church, and both my sisters and I were involved in the youth group. Even though I was saved and I had plenty of great Christian influences around me, my relationship with God was on an as-needed basis. I would only talk to God when I was faced with a crisis or death in my family. I knew that religion was important and that one day I needed to raise my kids up in the church, but now it wasn't high on my priority list. So I, too, um, grew up in a Christian home with parents who sought after the Lord and had a strong relationship with Him. When I was in elementary school all the way into my college years, I attended church out of compliance to my parents. They always modeled obedience to the Lord, and they were wonderful role models for my sister and I. At six years old, I accepted Jesus as my Savior, but I was missing a bigger picture, an authentic relationship with Him. So I was first exposed to pornography when I was 13 years old. I was at a friend's house, and we were scrolling through TV channels late at night and came across an adult film and began to watch. At the time, I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Little did I know it would have a hold on my life and cause major problems for me in the future. It went from being something that I had viewed at a friend's house to something that I was viewing by myself. And it went from watching it on TV to searching for it on the internet. In 2005, I went to Oklahoma State University on a football scholarship. My main focus for the next four years would be football, partying, and hanging out with friends, girls, and in school, in that order. This was the first time in my life that I was on my own and I could make my own decisions. Obedience to God was not one of them. My pornography addiction did nothing but grow. I was an 18 to 20 year old kid with freedom, privacy, and the internet. And I wasn't hurting anyone and no one even knew about it. Even though it changed the way that I viewed women, relationships, and sex. It was my secret which occurred almost every night of the week. So while at Oklahoma State, um, church was one of the last things on my priority. Um, I spent a lot of time faking my relationship with the Lord. I did attend church with my family when they moved to um, Stillwater, where Oklahoma State is, my junior year, um, because my people-pleasing spirit didn't want to upset my parents. However, um, I still claimed to be a faithful follower of the Lord. I went on mission trips um, the entire time, completely faking who I really was. I was pretending to be someone um, that I didn't even know. Um, and I was being one person at church, and I was being another when I was out with my friends. So Kaylee and I met briefly at a party one night our freshman year. I thought she was pretty hot. After too many drinks, I asked if she wanted to come back to my place, and I was immediately shot down. I just said, okay, and I moved on to the next one. <laughs> so that night I promised myself that I definitely would never date that guy. Um, it was a year later, and we went on our first date. So describing our dating relationship as dramatic would be a huge understatement. There was something about Kaylee that made my emotions get the best of me, but I was obsessed with her, and part of me liked it. We would argue, then fight, then break up, then make up. After a year of this, we both had enough, and we decided that we loved each other, but this cycle wasn't healthy for either of us, and we decided to end it. Ending our relationship was traumatic for me. At the time, I knew how emotionally exhausting it was, um, but I didn't care. I had put Matt on a pedestal and made him my idol instead of investing my love in the Lord. Matt was the man of my dreams. He was exactly what I pictured when I pictured the perfect man. He was a Christian. He was a good-looking athlete. He valued family like I did. When he dumped me, I was crushed, and I needed the Lord, but I wasn't ready to surrender. So although we weren't dating for the next year and a half, we always kept tabs on each other and occasionally met up from time to time. And yes, the drama never stopped, but neither did my obsession with her. I tried dating other people, but no one ever made me feel like her. My heart started to mend, but there was still a huge hole. I continued to try and fill with friends, dating other people, working harder at school. Still faking my Christ-like faith, um, I was... I was trying to be with other believers, um, but they all saw right through my, my faking. 
Um, I, I definitely wasn't in a place where I was ready to surrender my heart to the Lord. I had not cont- contacted Matt in months, which was a record, and I had decided that maybe he just wasn't in the cards for me. I had several opportunities to play football beyond college. Right after uh, the NFL draft in 2009, I was picked up in free agency by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. People say that NFL stands for not for long, and this was very true in my case. I bounced around a couple teams and had several tryouts, but never stuck anywhere. At every level, I was the best at my position, but now I was just another guy. My dreams were quickly crumbling, and depression and anxiety was setting in. Well, that summer, some of my friends from college came down to Dallas to visit, and one of them told me that Kaylee had started hanging out with one of my best friends from college. I tried to play it off like it didn't bother me, but I was immediately jealous and couldn't let this happen. As soon as they left that weekend, I called her. So that summer, uh, Matt gave me a call. He'd ask if I'd meet up with him, and I nervously agreed. When we met, he um, explained to me that he had regretted the breakup and that he wanted to be together again. My emotions and feelings overcame me, and I immediately agreed without hesitation. So in July of 2009, we met up, and it was like the first time we had started dating, without any of the drama, though. I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. We got engaged six months later and married the following July. My intentions for being a husband, a good husband, um, or a husband were good, but my addiction was still there. The week before our wedding, I told myself that I was finally done with pornography and that I wasn't going to bring that into the marriage. I was going to quit once and for all. We had our issues just like any other newlywed couple, but we were able to get through them. I was told, happy wife, happy life. So as long as I could make Kaylee happy, everything would be okay. <clears throat> Just take care of everything, and my part was done. Any issues we had, we were quick to sweep them under the rug. So for me, our married relationship was a lot different than our dating relationship. Married life was a dream for me. I thought I had married the perfect man that I had idolized for years. He rarely got angry with me. He did the dishes, cleaned the house, and even took care of the yard. I felt like we talked about everything and shared our deepest thoughts. He listened when I talked about my day, and he didn't seem to have any troubles of his own. I would ask him how his day was, and he would just say, fine. I couldn't believe how relaxed he was. He was always doing things for me, and he didn't even ask me to help out. In all reality, I had no clue how to be a godly wife, and I was not a safe place for Matt. I went to work in our family business in Rowlett and began working long hours. I worked 12 or 13 hour days and then would come home and go to the gym. I had just enough time to eat dinner with Kaylee and watch a show we had on DVR before it was time to go to sleep. Kaylee got a job as a school teacher, and as any school teacher can relate, when she got home, she was wore out. The last thing she wanted to do was have sex with her husband, especially when I wasn't really contributing anything to the relationship emotionally. Our sex life struggled early on, and my pornography addiction that I was going to quit as soon as I got married, without anyone's help, and without anyone ever finding out, came back just three months into our marriage. I immediately felt regret, guilt, and anxiety but I had to hide my emotions because Kaylee could never find out about this. Unfortunately for Kaylee, masking those emotions involved distance and eventually anger, especially if she tried to become close with me. So over the next few years, I started recognizing some distance between us. I started trying to overcompensate for the distance by trying to work harder to make Matt happier and constantly seeking his approval. I tried to be better at housework, loving his family better, or even becoming more sexual, but none of these things worked. A fault of mine is people-pleasing, and I was constantly looking to Matt for confirmation. I wanted to make my husband happy and be accepted. Galatians 1.10 says, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God, or am I trying to please man? If I am still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. We went to church occasionally, but were never consistent. I think we went just so our families thought we were plugged in somewhere. I was more focused on my hobbies. I didn't ever think about a relationship with God and had no clue what it meant to be a spiritual leader for my family. We were the excuses couple. We made excuses about not liking the preaching, not connecting with people our age, and not growing spiritually. Eventually, we just quit going. So the hole in my heart continued to deepen, and I was longing for acceptance, attention, and appreciation. I still didn't turn to the Lord. Instead, I turned to work. I put all my efforts into teaching, and I spent long hours at the school. I selfishly thought all of our marriage issues, even though I couldn't quite pinpoint what they were, were Matt's fault. I had thoughts that he was cheating, or maybe he was unhappy and just scared to tell me. I was constantly nagging him all the time. This only pushed him farther away. Kaylee never caught me viewing pornography. I was too cautious and too good at covering my tracks. 
She knew there was something going on with me, but didn't know what. It, even though I had with my eyes and in my heart over and over again, I was always on edge, never happy, super depressed, and feeling empty inside. With the stresses of work and anxiety of hiding who I really was, it was becoming too much for me to handle. The devil was really doing work on me. I was justifying my sin in my mind, thinking, can she not see everything that I do for this family? Maybe I married the wrong person. Maybe I need to be with someone who appreciates me and makes me happy. That she was the problem, and if I was with someone else, things would be easier. Instead of being a man and confessing my sin to God and to my wife, I continued to lie. I masked my feelings and started turning to alcohol for my anxiety. About three years into our marriage, it all became too overwhelming for me, and it was time to come clean. I told her that I'd been watching stuff on TV that I wasn't supposed to while she was sleeping. She was crushed. She didn't understand. She asked me if this had been going on for a while, and I told her that this was the only time, that this hadn't been a problem in the past. I couldn't tell her all of it. She wouldn't understand, and she would surely leave me. So I just told her what I thought she needed, that I, what I thought I needed to at the time. We didn't speak for the next couple of days, but after a little bit of time, she started to ask questions. I explained that I slipped up this one time and that it would never happen again, that I still loved her and that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. We made up after a week, and I kept thinking, man, I really dodged a bullet with this one. That will be the last time I ever do that. That lasted, again, about a month. So um, I couldn't believe that my perfect man had done this, the person that I put on a pedestal my entire marriage. Um, I immediately started punishing him and withdrawing from our marriage. I slowly stopped having sex with him, stopped telling him my feelings, and I even um, stopped caring about people pleasing. It all made sense now. The times I felt like he was cheating or lying about something, the times he wasn't in the mood to be with me physically, I started believing all the lies that the devil tells you. The next two years, we slowly drifted apart. There were ups and downs, but everything my wife did or said seemed to offend me. I was dealing with my secret sin, stresses from work, and, and depression. Instead of turning to the Lord, I tried to fill, fill this void in my life with other things. I thought if I got back into competitive sports again, I would get over this depression. So I signed up for a triathlon. Long hours of training, no energy to connect with my spouse. It was just something else besides Kaylee that I could obsess about. Don't get me wrong, I loved it, but it created a lot of resentment for both of us. Thoughts of me marrying the wrong person became more frequent, and thoughts of leaving Kaylee were becoming more real, especially when we would argue. Uh, we continued to attend church here and there, but my relationship with the Lord was almost non-existent, and I had zero desire to make any changes. Matt and I were like two ships in the night. When we had to be, we would put on a happy face for others, and we would pretend like we were okay, but in the comfort of our own home, we were in shambles. There was anger, anxiety, and depression. I even started to question the Lord. Why would you let me marry Matt? I had serious thoughts of leaving him before we had children together. So in, in April 2015, I started to travel a lot for work. And I didn't mind because things at home weren't going well, and I don't think Kaylee minded me being gone either. But being apart was the last thing we needed. My addiction started to come back slowly at first, but more frequently towards the end. I felt guilty and horrible about myself every time. I would come back from every trip hating myself and trying to be as distant from Kaylee as possible. Sex was almost non-existent in our relationship. We talked as much as we needed to, but spent most of our time together watching TV completely disconnected. My alcohol consumption was back to where it used to be, and my lack of patience was at an all-time high. I'd quickly get angry with Kaylee and completely shut down. For me, it was a relief having Matt gone. I could spend my uh, weekends and my weeks um, working as late as I wanted, and then I could come home to a fighting free home and do as I pleased. I didn't have to worry about pleasing him or anyone. When he um, would be home on the weekends, his drinking would begin and my anger would escalate. I finally got to the point when I was ready for Monday morning, so he would leave again. That September, we moved to Rockwall. I thought this would be good for us, and I made a vow to myself again that I would not bring pornography into this new home. And I uh, thought that would be the fresh start that I needed. That again lasted about a month. I wasn't having to travel for work as much anymore, so Kaylee and I were back on a normal schedule and we're doing life together. The problem, though, was that we never addressed any of our issues and just continued to sweep everything under the rug. We didn't want to do anything that might rock the boat, so we acted like everything was okay. That all came to a head several months later. Uh, we were on vacation with her family, actually, and uh, we went off by ourselves, and we got in a big fight, and Kaylee basically told me she was going to leave me. And I was, at that point, thinking, how can she leave me? Like, I'm the one who 
does everything right and she never screws up. <laughs> um, I, I took care. I thought I took care of everything for her, and uh, I, I was devastated. So at that point, we were so disconnected and distant. We were just like roommates. We did not attend church at all anymore, and the drinking was on a whole new level. I spent the majority of that month um, questioning my marriage. When we argued that day on vacation, I selfishly was ready to end the entire marriage and start over again. I did not realize how broken I was. I was hateful with my words towards my husband, and I would escalate immediately when a conflict would arise. I was never a safe place for him to discuss his struggles, and I was critical of him. I tried to blame every thing on Matt. I was so focused on my feelings and emotions that I just wanted a quick fix. I was angry and I couldn't imagine how a broken heart was part of God's plan for my life. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, so we do not focus on what is seen, but what on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. When we got back from vacation, uh, I I realized that I had to make some major changes in my life if I wanted to stay married, and I couldn't do this on my own. So I turned to God. For the next month, I read my Bible, I watched sermons on YouTube, and began to pray. I was starting to see God's grace in all of this. I was excited about changes that were going on inside of me and was sharing this with Kaylee. I even started to pray with her for the first time in years. I wasn't seeing the reciprocation, though. When I would ask about her spiritual journey, she would shut it down. In her mind, I was the one with all the problems, and she didn't even know if she could could love me again. When I heard those things, I immediately knew that I was doing this for her and not me. If she didn't know if her feelings were going to change, then what was the point? I stopped reading my Bible and slowly quit talking to God. So I saw a lot of big change ha changes happening in Matt's life, and for some reason when this started, my anger started to grow, and my hateful words got more intense. I had a deep pain that I had not let go of regarding the pornography, and I needed to grant him forgiveness. This was eating away at me and making me sick. I continued to hold on to the hurt and punish Matt for his sin. I wasn't able to draw a circle around myself and see that I was the one that was actually broken and needed to make some big changes. I needed to confess my sins to the Lord and to my husband, but my pride held me back. I wasn't able to see my marriage pass the next day. Obeying the Lord and loving my husband was not something that was on my radar. I didn't realize that love was a choice, and I was acting purely on emotions and, self emotions and selfishness. My hostility towards Matt grew, and I even turned farther from the Lord. I went on another business trip a few weeks later and I made a pact with myself and God that I wasn't going to view pornography while I was there, even though Kaylee and I weren't doing well and we hadn't had sex in months. Even though my intentions were good, I was powerless over my sin and I succumbed to it once more. The guilt, shame, and anxiety overcame me. I didn't know how I was going to hide this. The entire drive home, I, ple I pleaded with God, God, please take this away from me. If you can get me through this one last time, I won't do this anymore, I promise. I guess that wasn't God's plan, though. As soon as I walked in the door, Kaylee immediately knew there was something wrong with me. She could always tell. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. So I confessed to her. While I was on the trip, I got on the internet and looked at something I wasn't supposed to. But this time I couldn't play it off like it was a one-time thing. I didn't know what I was going to say. But after a few days of questioning, I finally confessed to her that this had been going on throughout our entire marriage and most of my life. I was full of shame. I knew that life as I knew it was over. We signed up for marriage counseling the next week and went a couple of times but didn't see any progress. It just made things worse in my opinion. During counseling, I started keeping a record of Matt's wrongs and finding ways for him to get help. I would express hateful opinions about him in the sessions that only led to conflict and then me escalating with anger. The cycle continued. After many weeks of counseling sessions, it was time to find something more productive for our marriage. Our marriage was quickly diminishing, and I felt divorce growing closer with each passing day. Kaylee decided to go to her parents' house the next week for spring break, and when she got home from her trip, she could sense my, my patience was thin <clears throat> and that I was angry about something. <clears throat> Sorry. After much yelling, she asked me to leave. I spent the next week living out of my suitcase and had no intentions of going back. Kaylee finally contacted me and told me to come home, and I told her that I'd come back, but that I was going to live in the guest room on the other side of our house. We would live as roommates for the next two months, hardly speaking to one another. 
So I finally felt like um, we were at rock bottom, and I didn't think there was anything we could do to get out of that hole. That's when I finally started praying. I was so broken with depression, physical sickness, and emotional distress that I knew the Lord was my only hope. I started pleading with God to put something into our lives to change the situation. I picked up my Bible for about the fir- for the first time in about a year. Um, I started watching sermons and speaking to other Christian women that were going through the pain that I was, and I prayed for Matt. I completely was ready to surrender to the Lord. No matter how long I had to wait, I was ready. So Easter of 2016, we decided to attend Lake Point Rockwall. That Sunday, they did a promo for Reengage. A couple talked openly about their problems and about God's redeeming power, how he worked through them to change their hearts and save their marriage. Immediately after the service, Kaylee said she was going to try it out. I did not want to go to this. I had already made my decision that I was going to file for divorce and even told Kaylee that a couple of days later. I told her that I, di- I didn't love her anymore and that I hadn't for a long time. I told her I made a mistake and married the wrong person and that my feelings were gone for her. So when Matt told me all of this and that he was ready to go ahead and... Um start talking about divorce, I knew I needed prayer warriors on my side. I contacted a friend who was a strong believer, and I decided to widen my circle. She met with me, and she encouraged me to go to re-engage, even if I was going to go alone for the first couple times. She spoke truth to me about wisdom, about marriage, and she told me a lot of things about being a godly wife that I had never heard before. Hearing her talk, I knew it was time to fight for my marriage and to lay my life down and surrender it to Jesus. So after much encouragement from Kaylee, I eventually agreed to go to re-engage with her, but I made sure she understood that there was a pretty good chance this wasn't going to work. After the first large group we attended, we were asked to rate our marriage on a scale of 1 to 10. I wrote down a 3. Kaylee wrote a 0. <laughs> My facilitator asked me to coffee the week after our first closed group meeting and convinced me to just give the process a chance and put my faith in God. I had always been blessed my entire life and never really had to rely on my faith in God. But I had been trying to do this thing on my own for too long and knew that I wasn't accomplishing anything. So doing the lessons together and re-engage was really hard. We would hear each other's answers and it would usually cause some fights between us. And it didn't seem like things were changing. We were still living in separate rooms and arguments became more frequent. One Tuesday around week four of our closed group, we were going over our lesson together and an argument started to develop. I said something that would have usually made Matt shut down and storm out of the room. Instead of blowing up on each other, we grabbed each other's hands and started praying. We prayed for God to make his presence known in our situation. We could immediately feel the Holy Spirit coming in. That night after we engaged, Matt moved back into our room. God has done amazing work in our lives over the last two years. I learned how critical it is to lead, <clears throat> to lead my family spiritually. I learned that I needed to surrender all things to the Lord and put my faith in Him. God showed me how great it is to be fully known and fully loved by my wife. God brought oneness into our marriage for the first time and made us a safe place to confess struggles and express our feelings to one another. We learned the importance of reading God's Word and talking to Him daily and being in community with other believers. We got plugged into a life group and have made lasting friendships that only God could have ordained. He has provided us with exactly what He knew we needed. I can honestly say that I love my wife more today than I did the day that we got married. God has renewed our love for each other and made us best friends again. By the grace of God, three days from now will mark two years that I will be free of my addiction. I'm proud of him. Um, So through Re-Engage, I have learned what it looks like to surrender my life to the Lord, and this is a daily practice for me. I've learned to be a safe place for Matt and how closer that will bring us each time I practice that. The Lord has taught me lessons on conflict and how to properly communicate with my spouse without escalating. I have found that through obedience, blessings will come. Deuteronomy 28.2 says, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Reengage has taught me that I can only change myself and that I must rely and trust on my Creator to work on everything else. So I, I just want to say, if anyone here is struggling with anything, if... Uh you know, if, if you have an addiction and no one knows about it, if it's a secret, I just encourage you to just confess. Just tell someone. Get it off your chest. Trust God and just, He will do amazing things with that. First uh, John 1, 5-9 says, 
This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Thank, Thank you, you, guys.